Good everybody, and welcome to the True Gamer Podcast episode, a, a podcast hosted by two of your gamers for you, the True Gamers. I'm one of your hosts, Eddie, along with my, the inverted gamer himself, Sheps. How's it going, bro? It's going good. I can feel that we're both feeling right. It's not going good, actually. Do you know what? I'm going to take that back. And also, I can tell just like the intro, normally it's so smooth, it's so crisp. We're there both was a struggling. Few bumps, there were a few bumps right there. We're yeah, both struggling. So- for those of you guys that don't know, yesterday was the uh, PlayStation 5 reveal event, which is going to be the topic of the show. Yeah. It's going to be a really good thing to get into. But we did a whole drinking game bingo. And on top of the drinking game bingo going horribly, there was a cu- like maybe like four or five of the, the ones on there that we saw that actually came up. Where we, we thought, nah, you know, one or two, that's all that's going to happen on here. A lot of them came up. On top of that, we had people also saying, hey, if I donate this, should I, would I? would you guys take a shot and then we just did shot after shot after shot basically i think they were trying to kill us i think they were like this channel is is worthless let's kill them off and we can save a lot of people before we get into the fact that this channel this uh podcast being hosted by amazing patrons on patreon.com forward slash conversations i need to say that you boys have got to learn to drink responsibly okay (laughs) yes because it is bad this was bad Uh, how how bad was you? Do you want to say like how bad you was last night? Because I'm, I was. I have to say, I was. My stomach was rolling around. It felt like someone was doing somersaults in there. Mm-hmm. And about three thirty, I had a nice little throw up right there. Nice little chunder, yeah. and that got rid of most of that. But still, I was in bed rolling around. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say. So, f- for example, the amount of alcohol in a day, totally doable. Yeah. The fact that we put it into two hours and the pacing, like the shots weren't even really paced out, <laughs> that's what got me and it caught up to me at the end. To the point, I was saying to you earlier, if I hadn't seen it on Twitter, I would have forgotten that um, they showed us the console. Yep. Uh-huh. I, I'm not sure I remember half the games. I remember Horizon Zero Dawn, but again, I saw Tyler talking about that. Yeah. I remember, I remember Ratchet and Clank and... Um, saying about spider-man <laughs> don't worry this podcast is going to be a refresher for yeah, you good, good. i actually went back and i watched the whole event again in the morning i oh, was like i you? need to see all of this yeah. so i watched it all again and it's a very very good show yeah. and you guys are in for a very good it show. was great but i um I, apparently we did a voice chat afterwards i yes don't remember it <laughs> don't remember doing a post show if we did a post show i don't remember yeah um, <laughs> i uh <laughs> At one I, point, it just sort of blurs into nothing, right? It's just like, oh, and yeah. sleep. <laughs> it's all faded. And this is, I'm suddenly understanding how um, Cal Kestis forgot how to jump, you know? <laughs> like, I just don't know whatever happened in there. Not part oh, of my DLC, boy. you know? <laughs> and uh, apparently, That's such a good way of putting it. <laughs> apparently, I was, I was um, throwing up all night. I remember throwing up a couple times for some reason in the bath. Oh, okay. I don't know why. <laughs> that's like, just that's just terrible. You're gonna have to string out the little bits of carrot afterwards when you're like from the drain hole. <laughs> I, I checked this morning and I just blasted it with water and it seems fine. Like it seems okay. like it all went down thankfully. Because um, that you know, so I, I don't remember that. And um, <laughs> and I don't, I, I don't know how I got from. I don't remember my house. My flat is not big, but I don't remember how I got from here. The last thing I can remember is i think wrapping the show maybe i'm I'm get we had to wrap it right eventually right we had to (laughs) and then it's sort of like a snap thing it was like i'm chucking up in the bath thinking why am i doing this in the bath and then i was and then i woke up this morning feeling rough so there you go that's me see what what you need to do you need to head over to discord and you also need to head over to twitter people have been piecing it together for me ever since i woke up this morning Actually, do you know what? I take that back. You don't want to go over to Twitter or Discord because you don't want to know what we did. It's very, very bad, and we are we're very strange people. <laughs> I, I saw apparently we sung the Pokemon theme. Yeah, our fucking Zach. He put that. Uh, he got the actual Pokemon theme and put our our singing over it. 
I don't remember seeing anything. I don't remember talking about Pokemon. I don't know how we got it. My chick was saying apparently um, I was just yelling, I'm Sheps for like 10 minutes or something. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> you were trying to prove to everyone like you're not really Sheps. It's like, I'm Sheps. Guys, I'm Sheps. Look, I, I, I me. <laughs> so new rule, no spirits when we're doing drinking stuff. It's a sip. It's like a, a swig of beer. That's all we're doing. Um I the agree. Noodle. I've taken a few years off of my life doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and definitely dropped like 10 IQ points that I couldn't afford to drop. Yeah, we can't. We really can't afford that. that man. Right. Okay. Before we get talking about um, the stuff, because I actually desperately need you to tell me what happened. Um, <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by our amazing patrons over on patreon.com forward slash conversations. Who do we have to thank? We have Jeremy Horde, uh, Jeremy Renner, I should say, Diogo Dildo, Dan the Man, Record Friction, Catsper the Friendly Petri- Patron, who's shagging on top of a hippogriff. And also, I'm going to add these guys in because of the massive donations that they gamers. gave last night. Our, oh. our amazing guys. Uh, it's going to be Jack the Jackal, Isak the, Isak the Legendary, uh, Kuba Kuba, and Co- Comrade Conrad. All of you guys who donated to our, our livers dying and whatnot, you guys yeah. are now uh, super bros. You guys have been made that yeah. for the month, okay? Well done, boys. <laughs> also, apparently, we've got um, we, we got the streaming PC paid for. Yeah, that was that was the big thing that we hit last night. We was quite far away, but because everyone wanted to see us die, we hit it quite quickly. Um, yeah, we've, we hit the streaming PC, so we're going to build that pretty soon. We'll do another live uh, video of that, of us building it, and you guys yep. get to tell us. Drinking game what we're for doing that, wrong. yeah. Oh, no, no, oh, <laughs> easy, easy now. Don't put that out there in the world. They'll, <laughs> they'll suddenly be like, yeah, yeah, so it just sounds like a good idea, Shep. Right. You should do that. Um, yeah, so we're going to do a live version of that, and you guys will get to see that soon, too. Yeah, but before... But that's all good. That's all amazing. I just want to say also thank you to one more tier from our bros, our that's true right. gamers, the epic lads over there that support us at the five dollar tier and above. I'm that paying is, attention because uh, I know uh, who's in this. <laughs> it's a uh, Jeremy Horde, Diogo Dildo, Dan, Record Friction, Cats the Friendly Patron, Max H, Adam Sunling, Benedict Clobbers, Fishy, Real Cinema, and Hawkins, aka H Bart's Twelve. Mm. That's right, new patron Zahir and oh, okay here we go brisk brave brigaders brandished bright broad bright blades blunderbusses bludgeoners balancing them badly that's a <laughs> that's a one one patron right there i love it i love it <laughs> thank you true gamers for keeping this podcast going and for making this podcast actually happen this is mm-hmm. the you guys are the reason why this podcast actually happened thank true. you so much true gamers all right shall we kick it over into the topic of the show which is going to be this playstation 5 reveal event yeah. that we got yesterday yeah let's do it kicking it off with the big 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 news We got to see the PlayStation 5. And not just one PlayStation 5, but two PlayStation 5s. We got the the first look, very first look, very cinematic look of the PlayStation 5 console. It looks sleek. It's both black and white with blue accent lights on the top. It's very cool and futuristic and curvy. And there's a version that comes with a disk drive and an all-digital version without a disk drive. Yep. How did you feel about this, bro? One, I look, I got to say, and I do remember seeing, I forgot there were two. <laughs> I do remember <laughs> seeing it and thinking, well, it looks really good. I want to say, though, the internet, you boys are savage. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot, a lot of um, <laughs> of, of memes come into this. Even, even Boss Logic turned a cell from Dragon Ball Z, turned his head into it. it just, there's, I saw one guy um, who had, I think it was his PS4, and just put a white binder outside of yeah, it yeah he got i think it was a ps2 he got a ps2 right. and then just put a white binder around it there's one where someone's got a, a router from virgin that looks yeah. very similar to with it. like two letters on the side yeah <laughs> it also um there's also a version that someone's made it's a you know those air fresheners those automatic air fresheners yeah, that you, yeah, yeah. you walk past someone yeah. took a picture of one of those and the list just goes on and on people are savage and i love the internet for that it's, it's just one of those cool things it's, it's pretty awesome <laughs> I'm going to say, personally, I really dig it. I think the white looks so crisp. It, it's yeah. got... And we've heard, you know, there's going to be new Mass, uh, Mass Effect games. It feels Mass Effect-y to me. Mm. And I think that's one of the reasons I dig it so much. Mm. Um, it looks great, man. I think it looks really good. I'm going to be getting on with the disk drive. 
Yes, me personally as well. That's uh, uh while the the discless version is very much for those people who like uh who see the future all being digital and stuff like that and I agree one day it will all be digital. Mm -hmm. For me personally right now it isn't all digital and I'm very very fond of my discs and my my drawer full of games and stuff yeah. like that, collect editions. So I'll be getting the the disc drive one. Yeah. And just because we have so many games still on disc you know and it will be backwards compatible with at least the ps4 you know minimum so yes uh, yeah i'll yes, definitely right. be getting the disc drive for sure for sure there is two little bits more two little bits of information more that i wanted to add to this okay. one they didn't announce a price for the consoles True. either of them so um we don't know anything about that yet it's still up in the air uh, we had our polls and predictions pre-show when we were when we were recording last night when we were doing our stream. Mm -hmm. People were landing in the area of there was a disturbing amount of people that were saying, "Yeah, it's going to be around four hundred to five hundred, right?" I was like, "It's not going to be that cheap. It's, it's not going to be that cheap." It's optimistic, boys. I, yeah, I, I hope I hope you're right. It's optimistic. I did see like maybe ten percent that were saying three hundred to three nine nine. That's just that's just that's you know wishful thinking. We need to come up with a new word for it. We because that's beyond wishful thinking. Yeah, I think if you'd have said that to me last night, I still wouldn't have bought, have believed you. You know, so yeah, yeah that's, that's that's pretty wishful thinking. Again, look, I hope you're right. If that thing comes out three nine nine, I might genuinely buy two, and I'm not even joking. Yeah, because I mean that would be just one for downstairs, one for upstairs, one for the bedroom, one for the bathroom, right, exactly. buy one for the kitchen. Yeah, at great. that point, and and. People think we're joking, but look, TVs used to, families used to have a TV, you know, most mm -hmm, places mm -hmm. have TVs in, in just about every room. I mean, even my flat has uh, three rooms, right? Yeah. We have two TVs. There you go. <laughs> so. You Wait, know, and, and soon with the, with the donation money that, uh, that almost killed us, we'll be able to buy another TV for your bathroom as well. There you go. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Mate, last <laughs> night, I apparently, you know, if I get like that again, I'll just take a bath with the TV. It was <laughs> bad. I feel I, I feel pretty rough today, especially like I'm older now. You know, we're both like what, yeah, you, we're thirty plus are you now. Are you I'm thirty now. Yeah, yeah, shit. Like, mate, at twenty, you just bounce back, you know. But ugh, the idea of like hair of the dog, I'm not even eating today. I'm going full water detox. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh yeah do you know oh. what i i got up this morning and i this is a bit of a derail but i got up this morning i i made sure that i wasn't going to be sick again i got my stomach sorted i took a, a pair of par a couple of paracetamol for my head because it was banging i drank three glasses of water went back to bed for like half an hour and i was like do you know what i think i need to eat something as well in order to get some some energy moving inside me and i had a nice fry up a proper fry up with like eggs and sausage and stuff like that i, I did like, see the, yes. the picture and it made me want to chuck <laughs> <laughs> but just looking at the picture you're like nope. I know it's, oh. it's, it's definitely a good way to go i think i probably should eat something but yeah maybe, get, maybe. Some, get something greasy in you get something yeah. greasy in you um as well as that uh the no price we only have pictures of the front of the console mm -hmm. and we know that there is going to be at least one usb a port and one usb c port on the front which yep. is cool because that means that we at least we know we're getting USB C ports, unlike what we're getting on the Xbox Series X, which Absolutely. is strange, right there. Absolutely. How how many ports do you think we'll have in total? I, I got to imagine it's got to be something like three or four at the back, right? Yeah, I would think I would think somewhere in there. Um, you just but then Xbox, at least one that picture we saw for the um, was it the Series X or? A, potential Lockhart thing like Which they one? missed they were missing a couple of ports at the back oh that was the so i think that was the series x but that was before it actually became final it was one of those right. dev, dev units or one of those yeah. uh okay, mock -ups okay. that they made and whatnot it was missing a lot of ports at the back yeah but, i yeah. feel like especially at, at this point these ports are so cheap that yeah. like the most expensive thing about it is the molding or to for the space you know getting that design made yeah. So just include as much as you can, you know? The only thing that I'm thinking of is that uh, the PlayStation's supposed to have an MVME 
slot uh, expansion slot for for SSD storage space. Mm-hmm. And if I'm I'm not a, I'm not a PC dork, so I don't know about this. You know, Zahir, here you're probably gonna need to let me know in the chat and whatnot. But I think NVMe cards they're they're like almost like RAM sticks. They're quite wide, like long and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So that would automatically take up a ton of real estate on the back of the console, if you know what I mean, right there. Yeah. I mean, if if it is on the back of the console, it might be internal. You never know. You never. I mean, know. by the look of it. I wouldn't be surprised if you enter into it through the side. You know how, like, normally we have to take the bottoms of these things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, yeah. And if, it, if so, if everything's built like um, a, a book shelf, you know, where it stacks in in front of each other. Yeah. I think that might instead of you know because normally it's flat and then stuff goes up, but if everything's sideways, hmm. more like a PC in a sense. I don't know. Yeah. It'll be interesting. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. We'll have right. to see. It'll be very interesting. I did uh, one final thing on the on the console. It's design. Are you a fan of it? I really like the look of it. I do. Yeah. I really so this like was, the look of this, it. This was something I was thinking about. I was like, so PlayStation, when they came out with the DualSense and it was two-tone, it was like black and white. We was mm-hmm. like, ooh, the reason why there hasn't been a black and white console in the past or like a, you know, a funky design console in the past because it's going to alienate somebody. Mm-hmm. And the reason why they go for just a black because it's like, you know, it's going to be something you don't even have to look at. You know, it blends into the background and yeah. everyone's cool. But they've gone out of the box and they've gone, you know what? We're going to go for something that's very designed, very sexy looking, curved Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and futuristic looking. I dig it. I haven't seen anybody online say, God, that looks disgusting. It's almost like they've they've gambled and hit it right on the head. Yeah, like they... um... Look, people have taken the piss out of it, which is fine, you know. Yeah. But no one, no one is saying, "My God, this is so ugly." At least none. Yeah. None of the people I follow or have seen. You'd, you'd think that people would just be retweeting it whether they agree or disagree, you know? Yeah. It's, so I it's think so. I think we so generally cool. agree. It looks good. There is a. There was a couple of uh, pictures that got sent to us in the Discord server. One of them that I love the most. And I put these pictures up on on the screen as well, so you can see. Um, because we've been getting into Destiny recently, someone sent. Uh, I think it was Dan sent a picture of yeah. Zavala or a Titan with a, with that. a PlayStation head. I, was like, <laughs> I saw that. There's one here of um, it's like a skyline of uh, some city at night, and it's just the PS5 just slap bang in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> it fits right. It's all these funky futuristic uh, uh, buildings, and then it's got a PlayStation. It's like, ooh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, it looks. I think I personally, I think it looks really good. Yeah, and I'm. Think, I'm a big fan. I, you know, I really like the the Dual Shock. I'm calling it Dual Shock Five. I like it. <laughs> I like the controller. I like the look of of the console. I mean, the the Series X looks fine, but it yeah. it didn't make me go, oh wow, you know. And I don't mm-hmm. know. Maybe it's just because it's a bit more out the box. Fact is, it's going to probably end up behind my TV, and I won't ever look at it. But you know, yeah, for, for now, me. Uh- for me, it's going to be front and center on the desk like it is my PlayStation at the yeah. moment. But I think Microsoft did exactly really what anyone would adv- be advised to do if you was to be making a console. Yeah. And that's make it basic, make it very, un, un- uh, not unappealing, but like with nothing sticking out, with not, not an eyesore, just something that people would be able to put to the mm-hmm. side if they want to. And they did a very good job with that. It's just that PlayStation have come up with something very different and somehow have nailed the design that everybody yeah, loves. I mean, look, in fairness to Microsoft, the Xbox being a cube is kind of different, right? And I'm it's looking true. at the picture of the lineup from the PS3 up to the PS5 and then the 360 up to the Series X. Oh, you're looking at the size thing, the size mm-hmm. chart here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So not only... Uh, look, I want to say that the Series X... It looks great. It looks fine. It just didn't catch my eye, right? And that's mm-hmm. the thing that the PlayStation has done. In terms of size, by the way, boys, I'm not really too bothered. Like, it's only it's going near my TV. You know, like I've got space for it. I'll find space for it. Um, mm. So I know some people might be bothered by that, but I mean, it's it's not fitting under my TV. That's going to be annoying. But other than that, like, I wonder why the disc drive sticks up. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> I I think it looks good personally. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> they did also mention, and I can't remember if they mentioned this before, I feel like it was new. They said that it's going to have a 4K Blu-ray disc player inside it, um, which Kinda is great. Kind of had to, didn't it? Yeah, it had to. I mean, it, it was strange that the PS4 didn't have one, but mm-hmm. yeah, there you go. Um, 
Next, they announced uh, also a pair of 3D Pulse wireless headphones. They're all white and everything to match the console, which looks great. A charging dock for the DualSense controllers, mm -hmm. uh, a media remote, and all white, and a HD camera to basically oh, replace yeah. the the uh, camera that you get now for like PlayStation VR and stuff like that. I all of them look very that. cool. All of them look very cool. Oh, didn't we have a pizza bet as to whether or not it ships with a camera? Oh, shit. Okay, hold on. Did we say ships, or did we say they would show off together? Oh man, I don't remember. Ooh, we're gonna have to go back and have a look. If there's any, if there's any guys in the chat right now listening, if any of you guys remember, call us out on it because we did have something like that. Yeah, and, um, but that might be a much older video. Actually, thinking about it, we were just talking because we were talking about both consoles, weren't we? When we we knew nothing about them. Yeah, we were said, will either one come with it? And we said yeah. like, no, there isn't gonna be no, no, for sure, there's not gonna be or whatever. Um. That could be really interesting. They haven't yeah. said whether this comes in the in the box. They say, it looks like it's going to be these are uh, accessories that you can buy in addition mm -hmm. to the console. But you never know. They might turn around and go, "Well, actually, yeah, the no, the the, the camera comes with it. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost a bit more, but it's, the camera comes." With I mean, it, like, you know I, mean? I could see them maybe going with an angle of like all of this, and you know, with the headset and everything, saying like, "Look, um, you know, if you need new stuff or you're new to gaming, this is it, your essentials." And then like a more bare bones where you just get in the console, which is the one I'll be buying. But yeah. It's that wouldn't be a bad play. Yeah. If you give people options, it's never bad. You yeah. can't you no one's ever said like, oh what, I'm gonna you're trying to sell me the basic version over here, and then there's another option where I get more stuff for more money. Right. Get out of here, Sony. <laughs> right, exactly. Especially like I was about to say for stock. Like if you you know, go into retailers. But if you're buying direct from Sony, which they're doing yeah. now, then yeah, it makes it makes sense. It's a good idea. Yeah, very very interesting. That was the cool stuff. So that was the console, the main attraction of the of the event, and it happened exactly exactly the way that we said it, bro. We said that they would show off a bunch of games. We said they would say, "Oh, it's running on a PlayStation 5." Yeah. And then right at the end, pull out the big wang and just drop it on the table and be like, "This is the console." Lads. Yeah. So we nailed it. Everyone nailed in the it. chat, go suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, that was quite cool. That was a quite cool moment. Do you think the whole event, the event as a whole, was a success? Dude, I, th I from what I remember, <laughs> <laughs> it, I hate to always be bagging on uh, Microsoft here, but their event, which was what four weeks ago, something like that. Yeah, crap in comparison. Like Very not much, only yeah. not only were they showing us first party exclusives, mm -hmm. you know we saw um, Horizon Zero Dawn, we saw Spider Man, we saw what else did we see? This is Ratchet and Clank. Yep, Ratchet and yeah, Clank. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. So not only did we see that, as well as I presume some of those games might be third party. Who knows? There was just so much more action in it. Like I feel like the pacing of those videos. That we saw, you know, the the promo reels were so much. I don't know, it was just more exciting, more engaging, and they showed us the console. And I, I just think I think they nailed it, man. I think they nailed it. I really think they did. I <clears throat> I said before this was this event went exactly the way that I predicted slash hoped it would go. Mm -hmm. I said they come out with some exclusive games, and we we even called we even called Horizon Zero Dawn. Like, you was did. Like, not yeah, me. I did. Okay, you did. I I said if they were going to show anything, it would be like a teaser for God of War because it's had the most time. And you flat out said Horizon Zero Dawn. And by the way, it looks like they have a lot more game than I was expecting. Yeah, a lot more. Yeah, it seems like they've almost got it completely. They didn't put a release date on it, which is one of the next things we're going to talk about. Let's talk about the next games actually. Right. Let's bring we'll go right into it. So the top games that were announced at this event, there is a ton of them. I'm not going to go through every single one, like the the smaller ones, but they were. All of them looked interesting in their they own did. way and is going to be appealing to people. Um, the big games, Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Oh my God, that came out of nowhere. Didn't yeah. see that coming at all. Was not it's expecting going that. to be in it. Not expecting it at all. Apparently it's going to be 
it's not going to be its own game, which I could argue after thinking about. I was like, you know, you could make your own Spider Verse My- Miles Morales game mm-hmm. using the same engine as the uh, Spider Man PS4. Yeah. They could have. Anyway, it's been confirmed that it's going to be a substantial quotation expansion, not a full game or or a small DLC. It's going to be something big, and it seems to be a part of a PS5 upgrade for the original game. They mm-hmm. haven't gone into specifics exactly how this is going to be whether it's going to be so uncharted did a lost legacy uh standalone game and infamous did a first light standalone game mm-hmm. we assume it's going to be something like that or it could be attached to spider-man ps4 just up you know when they do the up for yeah. ps5 it might be attached to that that's what i think it will be personally yeah, they they said they're gonna they're putting a massive massive overhaul of the original game for PS5. That makes me think that there's something worth playing. There's something in this game that's worth playing again. So yeah. they probably want to sell the game again and sell you this uh, expansion as well in the same part in the same part right there. Um, I'm looking forward to it. That was fucking amazing. It looked really good. Miles is especially after Into the Spider Verse, like. I wasn't really a Miles Morales fan. I just thought it was a bit meh. Don't who really cares, you know? Mm-hmm. That film was great. That film was fantastic. I love it. I never really knew about Into the Spider Verse or anything like that. I'm a I'm a Spider Man noob when it comes to that sort of stuff. But when I watched it, I was like, wow. So this is like a, a real story and what? This is like a real thing. Turns out it's a real thing. I'm like, cool, no problem. I'll I'll be very interested to see the the sequel, which I think is coming out in 2022 or something yeah, like that, right? Soon. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and now they're putting him in the Spider-Man game. I think personally, the best superhero video game ever made. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I def- think that's fair to say. say. Uh, I guess Infamous doesn't really count, does it? Does yeah, it? I'm thinking more comic book superhero yeah, like sure. proper thing like that. But well, I agree. You guys can let me know in the chat as well. I agree. And also, do you know what I suspect? I think they're trying to test the waters to see if they can get some Miles Morales stuff, you know, if they can do a game with him. Dude, they could... Do you know what? That may be what they're doing. They may be just testing the waters to see what the reception is and whatnot. And... I would have, I could have told them before if they went. Do you know what we're thinking about, Eddie? We're thinking about doing a Miles Morales game, but we're gonna do a DLC sort of expansion to test the wall first. Mm-hmm. I would have said, scrap the expansion, go for a full game. You're going to sell millions. Yeah, that would I have agree. perfectly fine. It would, and I think there's enough content there as well to make a full on game. I hope that's what happens anyway. My, my only worry, and this is why I think why Miles Morales didn't take off. Mm-hmm. Is at least early on they were they were going too hard on the, oh look he's like he's mixed race and and both of them aren't white you know it's like he's black and Puerto Rican I'm he's not something sure, actually. South no, American no. he's something he's black and South American and I think they spent too much time on that which I get that he's that makes him different from Pete but the thing that makes Miles Morales interesting is Miles Morales yeah. not not what you. Te- what boxes are ticked on on questionnaires, you know? Yeah. And yeah. the Miles Morales they showed us in um, in what's Into that movie called? Into Spider Verse, right? Like his his race and all that stuff never even comes up. It's not relevant, except that the there are different palette colors for his parents and him. You know, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And that <clears throat> guy, that Miles Morales, huge fan. I want to see this guy. I want to see this kid in. I mean, that Miles Morales looked a bit older. I would say he's yeah. twenty ish. <clears throat> He is um, older, and he's a the voice actor as well. I can't remember his name. I'll, I'll throw up a tweet if I remember. The voice actor himself came out and goes, guess what, guys? I'm going to be the voice of Thing. And apparently he's like a really cool guy, does really good work and stuff good. like that. So great, 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 yeah. t- great for him, uh, yeah. As long as they write Miles like he was in the movie, mm. uh, except older, great. I'm, I'm so down, so down. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy! All right, that was uh, that was the biggest one, and also I posted our reaction video as well on the channel. If you guys yeah. want to go check that, out. it was pretty pretty insane. Um, the next game, Horizon Two Forbidden West, the Horizon Zero Dawn sequel. Oh, this time we was like Horizon One Dawn. What could they call it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what could they call it Horizon Two Forbidden West. Um, no release date of this game. We. I think maybe 2021, early 2021, something I like that. I could see that. But 
we have a Horizon sequel. Now, you're not the biggest Horizon Zero Dawn fan. You wasn't too sold by it, sold by it, like a couple of the people in our community. But how did you feel anyway? I, first, like I, I like the ge- I want to like the game. Let's say that, right? My beef was the writing. I felt like it was so underwhelmingly written, but I love the concept. I love visually it's stunning, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. But my beef is that Aloy has almost no character. Um, there was this weird, like, I felt there was this weird man-hating vibe. Like, every villain is male. Mm-hmm. Anybody that's incompetent is male. And all the best characters are, you know, all the, all the characters that are, like, good, you know, holes, you know, the, the characters you want to support are all female. And I just, I felt like it was a bit heavy. For me, I felt like there was, a, it was quite a heavy-handed message. And Aloy doesn't really grow at all she doesn't grow she doesn't she's kind of got a ray issue where she doesn't really struggle at anything you know that is one thing i will agree with you i never said this before but i do feel like she didn't really she didn't really grow in the whole time she was like and she was also very different to everyone else. It's like everyone mm-hmm. else was were cavemen from the Stone Age and whatnot. They were like, we we burn we burn this animal as sacrifice to God, and then right. and then she comes along and she's like. I don't understand what you guys are doing. Why don't we just build uh, monuments? And why don't we just like as if a normal functioning adult, right. like from now, had been dropped into those times? I was like, this doesn't really That's, make sense. That <laughs> is something that bugged me as well. It's like Aloy, fine, she's a hyper genius, right? She's two hundred IQ, cool, great for her. But if her world is that small, then she's two hundred IQ with the experiences of that world. You know, yeah. she's not thinking about nuclear particle physics, yeah, right? Exactly and, exactly. and anytime she comes up to like all this new tech. She just sort of figures it out instantly, realistically. Like, find the owner's manual and sit down and read it for a bit. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> like she just, I, I feel oh. like she, she never really struggled. She never had to really learn anything. And I really wanted to like her, man. Like, I really wanted to, but she just wasn't particularly likable. Ah, uh, that's that's a shame. That's a shame because I'm um, I am a fan of the game, other yeah. than that one problem I had with it. And this sequel. It looks like it's going to be more of that game. Maybe they'll improve on the writing. Maybe it'll be something that you'll like. But the aesthetic, it's a lot more brighter. It's a lot more... There's a lot more uh, tropical countries as well. There was, like, real animals with, like, crabs and stuff and Mm -hmm. fish around the place. But it looked great in terms of aesthetic. It did. And I will say as well, I have the impression, because I can't remember the actual thing... um, (laughs) I have the impression that Aloy has more character. She just, I feel like she said a couple of things that made me go, oh, this is more than just scientific observation. I need to go back and watch it. Yeah, go back and watch it. I think it's going to be much better this time. I hope so. Because again, like I really want to like it. Like you said, the aesthetic, it's freaking gorgeous. You know, I love the the robo dinosaurs and crabs and all that stuff. Yeah. I just... Also, who's going to be the villain? Like, I got a lot of questions. I'm curious. I'm really curious, and I want it to be good. And if they write Aloy good, you know, if they give her some struggle, and you know, she has to learn this and adapt to new whatever, right? She doesn't just sort of win everything. Mm-hmm. Great, you know, great. Uh, okay, yeah. I'll give you an example. The Last of Us, the first one, anyway. It's not all just. It's not all just Joel winning. Right, yeah. it's not all just Ellie winning. They they struggle and suffer, and and bad things happen to them. You know, they get captured, and and things look dire, and that helps us not just to build the tension in the game, but it helps us like bond with them. You know, and Aloy didn't have that. That it, she's underserved by bad writing, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Not bad writing, sub. You know, you know what I mean. Like it could yeah, have been not, better. Yeah, it could have been better. I, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. Well, let's see what happens with this game. There was some really cool stuff they showed. They showed a, a corrupt elephant. Mm-hmm. They showed a, a corrupt giant turtle as well. It almost looked like the turtle from uh, God of War and whatnot, where Freya's house was and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was ridiculous. It looked gorgeous, and it. it I want to see more gameplay. I want to see more more stills. The stills that I've seen online are gorgeous. Clearly, running on a PlayStation Five. Yeah. Um, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. Um, they didn't say for Miles, the Miles Morales expansion, they didn't say whether or not it was for PS4 or not. They said they're going to be... A, like The only thing I could find was that maybe it might be attached to the PS5 upgrade. It would suck if they didn't make it available for PS4 as well. But what we saw anyway was PS5 footage 
So we can only assume it's on PS4 for now. For I now. Mean, they made a big thing about saying all the first games coming out will be backwards compatible. But like you say, if it requires... I wonder why it would need that for a game like... So like, for example, and I hope Ratchet and Clank is the next game, but what we saw there um, for Ratchet and Clank, you look at it and go, yeah, I can see how doing this definitely needs the upgrade. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But Miles Morales is... As far as like just surface level thinking, it's just a different voice actor. Yeah, you know, especially at least while he's in the suit. Mm-hmm. You know, so the only thing that's the thing because if they as well if they're using the same uh, the same engine, the same environment as as they did in the first game, then it's proven that it works on the first console on the PS4. So uh, and also it would be more people to sell to. However, mm-hmm. PlayStation have come out and said that they want to. Whereas Xbox have said that they're going to make no exclusive games for the Xbox Series X for the first year. Mm-hmm. It's going to be both cross-gen and whatnot. Uh, PlayStation came out and said, we w- we believe that when you buy a PlayStation, there is there are games for you. And we don't want to make you have to, well, make you want to wait or something like that or not, not want to buy it or don't feel like you're being served. So there is a chance that this game comes out, this expansion comes out and it's PS5 only. I personally don't think it should be that way. I think it should be cross-gen because it's an expansion and it's proven it's worked on a PS4. I think go for the PS4. Let everyone play this great, great expansion, yeah. hopefully. And uh, yeah. I definitely feel you on that. Like it, like you say, it's an expansion. There's no reason to make an expansion that's obviously running on at least mostly the same stuff mm. exclusive to next-gen. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll be really surprised if it isn't multi-gen. Personally, yeah. Um, we had a couple of other games as well. The next big one was uh, Ratchet and Clank. You, you were played... very, very excited for that. Have you played much Ratchet and Clank? No, I actually haven't played any Ratchet and Clank. Dude, so good. Honestly, I wonder what the price of them is now. But they are so good. They are so good. There's a couple on PS4 that are, I think there's two on PS4. Dude, mm-hmm. they're so good. And you, you look at it and you go, "Ah, it's for kids." Nah, mate. <laughs> Now, nah, mate, it's. It, I mean, it is childish. It's kiddie like that, but the the planets are fun. You got this whole like Captain Quark and all that stuff. Like, oh, dude, it, it's it's really genuinely good, and it it looks really good, man. The new one looks it looks sick, right? Not just the the portal thing that he was doing, yeah, which that looked really interesting it was a really cool mechanic instead of uh, you casting like portals and jumping through them it's like you pull certain parts of the world to you and yeah. and then you're there it's, it's such a cool mechanic so cool and i think it was it diogo that mentioned it when we were watching it there's a scene where he's like flying through these rifts going through different maps yes but yes they, it was all the map and it was all loaded in like there, yeah. Cra- it's the power crazy, of that man. SSD. It was it was really instant loading of all of those worlds as he's like flying through all of these rifts. Yeah, yeah and yeah. the worlds were detailed, big. There was so much going on. Dude. And I think I think I mentioned it on one of the one of the moments. I was like, this world looks like it's an actual living, breathing world. Like it yeah. has loads of not people, but people in the scene and whatnot. They were doing things like in a real world. Mm-hmm. And then chaos just strikes and whatnot. I was like, like it looked great. For example, you take a game like GTA, right? Which I appreciate is a GTA five is a PS3 game, but there, there are people there, but what are they doing? They walk up and down roads, they enter a build you know, that they're, they're models, <laughs> you know, they're not really doing stuff. Yeah. Um and even the little things like the lighting on the floor, the shadows look great. The yes. the the fluidity with how much like uh, his ears flopped around and his tail and clank and all that. Um, the the NPCs we saw um, like a monster or something crash through a, a hallway or something, mm-hmm. and it looked like it wasn't just you know dumb basic models that all turn with scared expressions and yeah. run. They looked like they all moved relatively dynamically. Yeah, it, it looked it looked good, and I gotta be honest, bro. Those games are a ton of fun. They're just they're just satisfying to play, man. If we, I'm gonna Google what they are now, I expect a, a I expect a PS5 Ratchet and Clank review from you when that comes out. I think that's yeah, what's gonna have to happen. On here. Might have to. <clears throat> um, speaking as you mentioned, uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. <clears throat> 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So the Rockstar logo came up uh, at the beginning of the the stream, and I got really excited. I was like, "Oh, Rockstar! They're I coming got my out with up too. They got I was my like, up too." And then it was modern day. I was like, oh, "It must be GTA Six. Oh, that rumored game. Come on!" And then you see the same characters from GTA Five. Yep. And then you see it's a PS Five GTA Five port. I'm not going to lie, for the first like few seconds where we were seeing everybody that we know, I was like, maybe it's like, uh, it, it's going to show us these guys and and it's like a sequel almost, you know, or yeah. it's, because um, you know, at the beginning we had all the games, all the old games shown and then it's like, that's the past, now here's the future kind of thing. Maybe they're doing something like that. No, no, it's just a, it's just a port. They're not done making money off this game. No, no, they're not. They're not. It's so fucking strange, man. I was like, so on top of that being not being their current flagship game, well, in their minds, it probably is their flagship game, but their their latest game is Red Dead Redemption 2. Yep. They seem to have completely let that die. They're like, you know, and I feel sorry for Amir the synth potato. He was on Twitter. He was very, very sad about this. He's like, I think I need to come to terms that Rockstar have let Red Dead Redemption online go uh, go to the... the the cemetery unfortunately it's dead um they've repackaged now gta 5 who which was a ps3 game yeah into ps4 and now again into ps5 yeah and i don't know who's asking for place uh, for gta 5 on the ps5 I'm sure there are people because they make billions and billions every single year yeah selling the game and also tons of microtransactions mm-hmm. is on the fucking MPD list every goddamn month. Oh, yeah. I don't doubt that people want to play. Yeah. I just don't think they want to play it on the PS5 after 10 years. Yeah. You know, they might want a slightly different game, you know? They might go, do you know what? That brand new game, that Godfall, the, the new Hitman game, Project Athea. Yeah, m- maybe I'll play those other ones, those brand new ones I've not right. seen anything of before. Maybe. <laughs> but no, 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 guys, we're going to give you GTA 5. It's become the new Skyrim, where we say, Skyrim, we heard you guys. We're bringing Skyrim to the Ouya. We're bringing yeah. Skyrim to the Apple Watch. <laughs> it's now going to be GTA 5. We're bringing that to your microwave, okay? We just, we're bringing right, it to the like microwave. We just, don't, we just don't need it. Like, And again, I'm glad people like it and, and still want to play it. But, to, okay, talking because we mentioned Red Dead, I definitely feel like they just did not give that the time and energy anywhere near it that they would with GTA because I can absolutely see um, like an online cowboy map deal like literally the same as gta just people riding their horses obeying traffic laws and, and stuff yeah you know? in my opinion it's cooler as well i like yeah. the cowboy sitting yeah me too i think it looks great and i just i think they they just didn't give it the time i just no i feel like it, i'm sorry to the red dead fans to amir in particular because man you guys just i haven't played red dead i'm not a red dead fan but yeah. i feel like it was definitely let to they, they, I feel like they, they let it out into the wild and were like, cool, let's see how it develops. And then didn't realize that unless they do something, nothing develops. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were they were like, shit, man, Grand Theft Auto is making us so much money online. If we bring out this new one, do you think we could just transition to that and then that will make all of our money? And they mm-hmm. put it out and it's like, no, it's not happening. Okay, pull it back, pull it back, guys. Right. All right, pull it back. We're going, we're going back now. Here we go. Um, yeah, so that was uh, the main games. There were a couple more games. Uh, there was Deathloop, which is a very cool little uh, uh, third-party yeah, yeah. game. There that was reminded a couple me of, of like Alien games. and Dead Space. Uh, is that is the it one? Death? I think De- I think you're thinking of a slightly different one. I think that was that Project Athea one that you were you was looking at. Um, Maybe, but there's a bunch of games, and I'll put a list of the I'll put a, a, the PlayStation blog post link yeah. in the description for you guys if you want to check it out. Was the one oh, where you Oddworld as, as well. Oh yeah, that's a throwback. That's a throwback. Yeah, um, he was really happy with that. Yeah, the yeah, Stray the, was the one that you could play as a cat. Yep, yep, yep. There was there yeah. was that weird one at the beginning, no, near the end, with those weird little black balls, and it kind of looked like a what was that? Yeah, I don't remember what that was called. Um, Everybody was d- saying d- it was d- a d- weed d- game. Oh shit, there was that furry game that looked weird. I'm not Yo, interested in that. Oh my god, what Definitely was that down. all about? <clears throat> Alright. <clears throat> anyway, that was the games that we saw at this event. Um, the only other thing that I want to put out there, and this is a message to PlayStation. You cowards. 
if you do some, if you do this again, I will write a steaming email to you. That's right, Shuhei Yoshida. I'm talking to you <laughs> right now. If they, because the console was shown off, it was beautiful. It had those beautiful vents on the top, and it had a blue accent light running down the edges of it. Watch that go if, white when we play games. If I get this console and I hit the button and it goes blue and then it goes, oh, do you know what? Now you're playing and it turns white. If it does that, yep. I'm going to be writing that steaming email to you and mark my words. Mark my words. It will not be a nice one. I will, I will not hold back anything. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit concerned that the price is high. I'm concerned too. I feel I that am. this was probably a good, a good place to do it. Based on the fact that they have whoever's making the decisions understands their their strategy really well, you know, like they've yeah. had the, they've up to this point they've paced it so well. Their show just smashed. And I should maybe watch Xbox's one just to give it its fair shake again. But I remember coming out thinking, yeah, it was pretty good, but I feel like this was better, you know, mainly also because there's so many titles as a PlayStation player that we recognize, like we know. Ratchet and Clank, we know mm -hmm. so many, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, Spider-Man, like, they're just so much bigger than what we saw at Xbox. Yeah. And the pacing of all this stuff, the fact that they started by just, like, doing these tiny little interviews, you know, and dropping out of E3, it's all this... That that was a good place to, to do it. I understand that they're saying they're waiting for Xbox, and I, I get that. I get that business decision, but I feel like they had so much attention that they could have done exactly what they did with the controller. You know, they tweeted out their picture, and then the next day, Xbox did theirs, and it was like the, it yeah. got 10% the attention. I think it's because of what you're saying, that is that the price is going to be slightly higher, yeah. that they didn't want to have any sort of, uh, I don't know about that price, anything like that, attached to the brand new unveiling of all these great yeah. games and this great console, which... So I, I think what they did was perfect, but prepare yourselves, guys. Prepare yeah, yourselves for that price. Because I think if it was 499 which I think we're all basically accepting of, Yeah. if they said, oh, and by the way, it's 499 it wouldn't matter that Xbox came out and was like, oh, we're 349 or oh, I'm sorry, we're 3, you know, 449 or whatever, right? Yeah. It wouldn't have mattered because they had all the attention after that banging um, event. Yeah, my worry is that it's going to be like six nine nine, and they're they're waiting to be for Xbox to come up with their first move. Like, I don't think it'll be six nine nine. No one's yeah. going to buy six nine nine, but I'm worried yeah. it's like way higher than we're thinking. You know? Yeah. Um. The thing that I'm worried about is that they say five nine nine. I can't. I can't do five nine nine, man. I mean, oh. Five nine nine is going to be tough. I think. I think what happens is we. It's a PS three thing where yeah. no one gets it to begin with, and they they have to drop it. You know, they have to. Yeah. Because I do. I just don't see us spending yeah. five nine nine. Yeah, five nine nine is a bit much. It is it's very very much. Yep. Um, we'll have to see. Hopefully, I'm wrong. Hopefully. Hopefully. Because look, I haven't been right about all these things, um, which are only most of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like maybe they wait for Xbox, or maybe they wait to the point where, you know, it's now or never, and they come out and they the prices are about the same, right? Yeah. Um, hopefully, Xbox re releases their thing, and then Sony does it the next day, and they're about the same, you know. Mm. It just fingers crossed, isn't it? And I mean, well, fingers crossed for us because Xbox has no hope unless it really is like five nine nine six nine nine. Xbox has no no way of getting the attention back. Like no way of getting the attention back. Yeah, if the price is somewhat reasonable with this PS5, then Xbox have no chance of getting any, unless they come up with something ridiculous. I don't, can't imagine what that something ridiculous would be, because I mean, it could be cheap. But that's that's still not going to be like like it'll be instantly people are like ooh okay. But did, what games of okay? I, no I just, games. I just mm -hmm. yeah exactly. No exclusives. No games. And I feel like. Don't get me wrong, the Series X is a huge upgrade from um, whatever the current... What the frick is Xbox One. Xbox One. But it's like a linear upgrade, you know? Like, it feels like an old-world idea of just giving it more power, right? Nothing's really changed. 
it's the American car thing where it's like they just chuck in a ton of horsepower and that's it. Where it's right. where you see get other cars in like Germany and whatnot who make really cool suspension, really cool brakes, also really cool turbocharger right, right. to go with that engine, and then it produces way more power and it's way more efficient. I think I I think I said it on the stream, but I was like, you know, the the PS5 doesn't feel like the next. Um, generation it feels like a new species and that's the yes they're, they're making some real changes and i really mean it if if assuming the stuff all works and is reliable and stuff and if it is anywhere close to what it looks like it might be i think within three to five years all the pc gamers are calling for sony exclusive you know that that proprietary tech i think that's mm-hmm. where everything's going to you know so that was something actually that I wanted to mention just briefly. Um, we mentioned it on the stream, and uh, I, me- oh, I mentioned it on stream anyway. Linus Tech Tips, uh, he was on a a podcast, and he's a famous mm-hmm. PC peasant. He talks about like PC parts, and he does build these epic rigs and stuff like that. Yeah. He, he's quite a big deal in the PC gaming community and whatnot. Yeah. And he was, he was trying to throw shade at... Tim Sweeney, yes, Tim Sweeney's right. Um, Tim Sweeney, uh, when he said that the PS5's SSD is revolutionary and is going to like change the game, and it's something that you just can't find on the PC market and whatnot. In fact, a lot of PC gamers got really butthurt about that comment right there. Mm-hmm. Um, and he actually tweeted directly at Tim in anger, and then Tim shut him down and gave him the facts. And then Linus Tech Tips made a whole apology video, basically saying. Okay, I I spoke way too soon. I didn't even stop to think because I thought, how could a console possibly measure up to a PC? Mm. And it turns out that they are actually it's actually way more advanced than a PC, and PCs are gonna learn something in this in this regard. Uh, and I was like, wow! First of all, great for the apology. It's very yeah. cool of you to do an apology. That's a good move. But that is amazing, and it just shows that this console, even if it is expensive it might still be worth it. It's just a matter of whether or not people I mean, can actually afford that that's price. A good, that's a good point. Like, the performance difference might be, you know, if the Xbox is 499 and the PlayStation 699 it might well be that you're getting tons more console for the PlayStation, assuming all this stuff's as big a deal as we think it is, right? Yeah. I just think people aren't used to or really willing to pay 699 for a console. But this tech could be freaking incredible from what we've seen of it like man it looks like i said it's a new species it's not like the xbox the series x is the next one right it's just the next in the line this feels like it is something very very different yes you know something else something else entirely Mm -hmm. all right quick uh quick prediction right here on your foot Tell me, when do you think we're going to see the price? It has to be soon, right? I th- I think they are really trying to... Within 24 hours of Xbox, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah? Or, or maybe even on Xbox's announcement. Like, they'll they'll wait for Xbox to do their thing, and then they'll tweet <laughs> theirs. You know? I think it's they just have a blog post waiting to happen. It's yeah, just like, I'm not even joking. Not, I think they have it It's in the ready. draft section. <laughs> right, right. I mean... The worst thing, I bet, do you know what? I bet it's something stupid. I bet they have, you know, another interview or something with Wired Magazine and they go, yeah, yeah, like it does all this. And can you imagine, like, in, and people get that for 4 It's incredible, right? They'll just, <laughs> just offhand in. comment. Right. <laughs> like, I, it could be something silly like that. I think it's within a few days of the Xbox announcement. I just, I think they're both going to try and bring it down to the wire. And the fact is, the Xbox cannot wait. It, it, it will get, it will lose the game of chicken. You know, yeah, it because, can't afford that, right? They're st- they're in this catch twenty two. They give us no information, we forget about them. They give us information, okay, we'll talk about it. Better be something we, that we want to hear. But then, if Sony does something, you know, like you, they cannot follow Sony. We saw that with the controllers. You know, you got ten percent mm-hmm. of the action, so they have to lead, and they have nothing impressive yeah. currently, unless they come yeah. out and they're like, yeah, it's one nine nine. Okay, cool. You know, sweet. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, it, it, <sighs> I'm gonna say so. I've noticed something quite interesting, and I don't know if this is on purpose or whatever's been going on, but it, it might be a correlation between uh, PlayStation. There might be a correlation between PlayStation's uh, announcements and like mm-hmm. uh, info drops and our shows. Our past 
four episodes have all been PlayStation 5 related. Like they've the main topic has always been PlayStation 5 because it just so happens that PlayStation 5 huge information dump happens at mm-hmm. that time. Yeah. And our podcast, the True Gamer podcast, only happens every two weeks. Like we tandem between that and the uh, and the Conversations podcast. Yeah, yeah. I think we might get. Uh, is it too soon to say for the price? Uh, no, I'm gonna this, say this is the thing. They could do it today. They could. Yeah, I think you we know? might get the price before the next True Gamer podcast. You That's think? what my prediction is going to be. So within two weeks. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, it's a lofty see. prediction. It's lofty. Let me see. Let me. I just want to have a look at like where we are. Ooh, uh, that would take us to like basically the beginning of July. I reckon. Do you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if it's near the end of July. I think yeah. it, they're going to really bring it down to the wire. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. End of July. Somewhere in like the twenty twentieth, twenty fifth. Somewhere in there, probably. It's my guess. That is going to be hot. I mean, it, we've only we still don't have even a release date as well for the console. It's still holiday 2020. They're saying yeah. that they're on track for that date. So it could be anywhere between like mid September ish all the way up to December. Probably somewhere in November's typical. Yeah. I think I think for what we've got, I think that's what we're looking at. If that makes sense. Yeah. Boy, this is this is something, man. This is something. God. Man, I've got the picture of the console up in front of me and that that beautiful gloss black sort of like waterfall coming down the front mm-hmm. of it. God, that looks so gorgeous. It, oh. it looks good, man. I think it does look good. And again, it, just in terms of how fancy it looks, I think it may be the more expensive console just by based on looking on it. You know, like the Xbox made a mm. cube, right? Yeah. So... I don't know. Oh God, I want it to be good and not cheap, but you know, well priced, decently priced. Yes, yeah. something yeah. that's affordable. Something you know, within the realms of reason. That's what we want, right? Um. Okay. All right. Uh, should we move on to our next topic, bro? Yeah, let's do it. So our next topic, and this dropped hot today, the review scores for The Last of Us Part Two. Oh shit! Okay. Okay. It is looking very, very good. Now, this is based on journalists, like games journalists and whatnot. Say, yeah. It's not so, you know, take it with however you feel with that. But unanimously, people love it. It's getting a 96 on Metacritic. Okay. 96 out of 100 is pretty hard to argue with. Yeah. And that's on that's par with... <laughs> it's on par with uh, Spider-Man scores It's on par with God of War On par with the first Horizon Zero Dawn So it's it's right up there It's looking very, very good And do you know what? I needed this to happen Because I was so worried about The Last of Us This has made me chill out a little bit more I'm like, okay, I'm going to get the game And it can't be completely terrible Now that it's got all of these scores now let's just see how it will sit with me. I'm going to say I don't trust these games journals one freaking bit. Not one bit. <laughs> Not one bit. But I guess I I feel like now nah, they would absolutely lie about it and say it was amazing if it wasn't. The, the thing is I I think I think some might do that. I don't think all of them would do that. Mm. And that's why I think that we can we can feel happy about it. I'm not saying completely trust it. Wait to see it for yourself. For example, if I had if I had cancelled my pre-order, which I did downgrade it, I didn't cancel it. Mm-hmm. If I had cancelled my pre-order and I saw this, I would have gone, do you know what? This is enough for me to give it a punt. They can't all be lying. They can't all be messing around. They can't all be bought off. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a shot. And I guess we'll see what happens in one week time. But I did also promise the boys, the boys that are listening right now, I did promise that I was going to do one week after the release, I'll do a a review episode. If I finished it by then, it'll be a full review. If I mm-hmm. haven't, then it'll be whatever I've played so far. And we can all talk about it. Because um, a couple of guys also are saying that they're waiting on our review, which is quite cool to, to think that people regard us in that sort of way. <laughs> but I, yeah. I gotta be honest. Uh, so yeah, first of all, that is cool. But I... um. 
this hasn't made me change my mind. I'm still not pre-ordering it. Yeah. I'm still going to wait for you. Yeah. You know, smart I just, man, smart man. I just, look, man, I hope it's sick. I hope I feel stupid for not, for waiting a week to play it or whatever. But I, I don't trust any of those games, journos. I'm glad that you do enough to keep getting it in, to get it and play it. And I oh. hope it's sick, but I'll wait for you to say if it's any good, you know? Yeah, no, I feel you, bro. I feel you. Oh, boy. Well, anyway, if any of you guys... I know a bunch of people were saying online as well. They were saying the same thing. They were like, oh, thank God I've seen these these scores. Now I can, I can breathe a bit of a, a sigh of relief mm-hmm. to say, hey, okay, at least... I feel like if it was a dumpster fire, then it would it would be at least somewhere in the 80s or something like that. Someone would come out and give the truth and something right. like that. Um, so at least they're feeling that way. Uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to it. We'll talk about this uh, in probably about two weeks' time because the game comes out in one week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see you guys then for that one. We will. Should we move on to our next topic? Yeah, let's do it. This one's a funny one, and you're gonna laugh. The punches just don't stop when it comes to Stadia. Everyone is picking on Google Stadia. How can things get worse for Stadia? Cyberpunk 2077 will not be available on Stadia at dead. launch. Dead. Dead. <laughs> dead. Instead, this is arguably one of the biggest games ever at this. Like, seriously, and I, I'm not joking, right? The Witcher is such an incredible game. That the fact that CD Projekt Red are coming out with another game, yeah, is good. I think is going to make this thing huge. Now it may not be like you know there were a few Call of Duties keep, kept breaking billions and stuff, right? I'm not saying it's going to be like a block. I actually think it will be a blockbuster, but you know maybe like a Call of Duty will do better than it. Fine, mm-hmm. but this is like the, one of the most significant games, you know. Yeah, that is just what is the point. What is the point, right? Why would you, you pay the subscription for this thing? I mean, yeah, you know I get it. You can really play on your funny? browser, but frick, who cares? Go on, bro. Uh, on top of the, the, I mean, Stadia have mis mis sold this service in so many different ways. They they made it sound like it was the most futuristic thing and the future is here now guys you can right. play any game you want anywhere even though right now you can only play it on a chrome browser and on specific google pixel phones and whatnot they right. haven't opened up if they open up to ios at least then they'll have a ton more people to to play with and they might get a few more customers maybe generate some revenue can't do that and also they said in their initial presentation that games that are being made now will take little to no effort to port over to to stadia Mm -hmm. because it's just like running a pc it's just in the cloud somewhere on our servers and we're gonna help them we're gonna help them with our with our servers because we understand all about it cyberpunk got delayed from april all the way to september and it doesn't look like they definitely weren't going to make that April uh, window then. Mm-hmm. And they're still not going to make the September window. How? Imagine this game came out in April. How long would it have had to wait for it to come out to uh, on Stadia? It, what, would it have been December that year? You'd have gone fucking seven months without playing this, uh, the, the biggest game of the generation? How Exactly, how would you? This, this is the thing is, you, you'd be like, oh, cool, I got Stadia. Oh, but I'm going to need to get... Cyberpunk, so I'll, I guess I'll fire up my PlayStation 4 or my Xbox, yeah. and then when you're playing it, you're like, why am I paying for exactly for Stadia again? And pay for three months, uh, sorry, seven months while it comes out, wherever, however long it would be for it to come out. Right. That's absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? It's it's nuts. It's nuts. It's crazy. Oh, fucking hell. That's Although, that. okay, why do you like the GeForce Now and not Stadia? So I like GeForce now because it is just it is just literally whatever games. So it has its own problem, and I'll tell you what that, and I'll talk about that in a second. Mm-hmm. I like it because it's just you buy a game on Steam wherever it is you buy, or a game that you already own and whatnot, and then you play it. Um, you do get Steam sales and stuff like that. The basically the the main allure to playing on PC is that you get to probably pirate games so you can't do that on geforce now um Mm. but you you get games for dirt cheap on like sales and stuff like that yeah yeah people with every everybody with steam has 50 games that they got for so cheap and have never booted up because they're still (laughs) playing counter strike or overwatch or whatever yeah yeah exactly exactly but 
with Stadia, you don't get those kind of discounts. You don't get those sales. You still have to pay full price for these games. GeForce now has its problem that it it's, it's it does cost monthly to play on their service, which is mm-hmm. fine. That's totally fine. But it's not sharing it with any of the publishers, and they shouldn't really because the publishers aren't doing anything in yeah, order to... Yeah, it shouldn't get to double dip. Exactly. They're not. There's nothing that they actually have to do to get these games to run on GeForce Now. It's GeForce Now that are handling everything. Yeah. So why they deserve money, I have no fucking clue. And it's a game you already own. You know, it's not like they're not taking anything away from the publisher. Exactly. They still say, okay, you still have to go to the shop and buy it. You have to go right. to the St- Steam store and buy that game. They're not saying anything else. And still, they want money. Um, so that's the reason why I can't fully support GeForce now, because of the issues there. Yeah. But that's the difference, that there's no sales when it comes to the, the, the games that you get on Stadia, as opposed to like buying it on PC, which is what right. it's supposed to be. And it's just not the same as playing on a PC. It's, it's just... you. You're playing on a PC with GeForce now, and on Stadia, you're playing on a, on a server, but that server is really delayed and doesn't get content the same time as everyone else does. Yeah. It's really, really stupid. Really stupid. So basically, you could play Cyberpunk on your GeForce Now day of release. Yeah. yeah. Assuming it, it is, came out. Right? That's, yeah. that's the thing. It's, um, all of the... So, uh, CD Projekt Red. CD Projekt Red have said that they are going to allow GeForce Now... Regardless, all of their games are on there. They're completely fine with that. And when it comes out, there's no porting or anything like that mm. to be done to get to GeForce now. It's just you buy it on it's the Steam. PC game, isn't it? Exactly. You buy it on Steam, exactly where everyone else buys it from, and then you play. And it's it's exactly Mate, the same. Do you know what? Nah. I was just going to say, like, I might get it on GeForce now so I can really get it in, you know, high graphics. And then wait till the PS5 to get the, you know. If the difference was, if the difference was April to to November when the console comes out, I would say, do you know what? It might be fun for us to yeah. chuck a fifty pounds at it to get yeah. it, or or get it on uh, Good Old Games, which is their website as well, and just get it for as cheap as possible. Play it in the beautiful graphics, and that'll be fun. That'll be really fun. But it's coming out in September. The console are probably going to come out in November. That's a good point. I forgot it's about that. Just yeah. not worth it, right? You're going to get the, the essentially the PC version on PS5 when it comes out. Yeah. Yeah. True. Oh boy. Man, I'm looking forward to that game so much. That and Ghost. Ugh. Yes. Oh, so we've got one week uh, until The Last of Us, and yep. probably about five weeks until Ghost of Tsushima. Oh yep. boy. And uh, what games are coming out on Xbox in that time? Um, uh, yeah, 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 that one too. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, but like, boys, honestly, the Xbox. <laughs> and okay, hundred percent. There is nothing wrong with getting the Xbox. I would absolutely recommend you get it if that's where all your friends are. Yeah. Otherwise, I feel like you are being badly underserved. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. F- um. Um. What is that game called? Uh. Uh, with, with Sora and all the Disney characters. Um, uh, Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. How did I forget that? Mate, I'm still wrecked. <laughs> You're dying still. <laughs> Kingdom Thank Hearts. you, Conrad. <laughs> all right, yeah. That, rough. Kingdom Hearts just became available for Xbox gamers, right? For the, I think it's, it's all on Game Pass. The first one came out on PS2? PS3? I'm not sure on this one, so I can't like, say. Yeah. It, this game's been this franchise is like fifteen years old, maybe older, right? And now you can play it on Xbox, and yeah, you can play Kingdom Hearts three, mm-hmm. but you haven't. If you've been an Xbox only guy, you can only you could only experience it on YouTube, yeah, or at your friend's house. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm not waiting fifteen years for games to finally make it. You know, mm. this is a. Uh... This is a worrying time for them. Worrying at the to, to put it lightly, to put it lightly, this is very worrying for them. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we've got one more topic, and then we're going to dive into some questions and whatnot. This is cool. a short one because we did do a whole stream on this. Uh, Destiny Beyond Light was announced mm-hmm. uh, recently as well. We did a whole live watch along with that. It seemed very very cool for yeah. a person who's into Destiny like me, and it seemed very very cool for you as well, right? It did look interesting. I don't think it's interesting enough for me to buy the 
deal. I'm not going to... Am I going to get... It's free, which is tempting. That's my price point right there. That's a good um, price point. Not going to lie. Not going to lie. But I don't know if I care enough to buy the DLC when it comes out, you know? Yeah. The... um the when you said um should you jump on and stuff like that i was say i was tempted to say yes but without the current content mm-hmm. it does seem a little bit weak right. and i was like eh, maybe maybe wait until we see what happens with this dlc drop on I mean, if it's the most amazing thing in the world then maybe we maybe we work something out you know maybe yeah. we we buy it and we play together and then we'll see how it goes so i said hold off on that but I was super interested because I wasn't going into that trying to trying to convince you or anything like that. Oh, typical conversations. Here we go. There we it's go. Off. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I wasn't going into this trying to convince you to play Destiny or anything, but then you was like, do you know what? This looks kind of interesting. I was like, really? I, I actually wow. was interested. The only thing that kind of made me take a step back was we played... You ended up somehow with two copies of The Division 2. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I don't know how you manage that, but I, I bought like, the I bought the game, and then afterwards I was like, you know what? I really want the collector's edition, like statue, and you could only buy it with the fucking game as well. So I was like, right. oh, here's the second one. <laughs> That's how much okay, of a loser okay, I am. Okay, cool. Um, and you know, we started playing that or trying to play that a bit. And first of all, like the gap to catch up to you was quite large. But you know, like if the game's good enough, I'll absolutely put in the work. You know, yeah, um, to get there. And then as we were doing that, they came out with the raid. Was it the raid? Yep, yep. And it was just, you were so disheartened by the fact, like, because it, it had this incredible party system. It was seamless and smooth, and it worked mm-hmm. so well, it was so easy to find people. And then they didn't have that for the raid, and it had all these problems. And it I was, was just extremely, like, extremely disheartening. Right. And I was just like... Am I, do I want to put in all the time and effort to get this character up to a point where you and I can play to then not have any end game, end game content to play? And even if they fix these problems, you know, within two or three months, like within two or three months, you're bored of it. You know, you're not going to be playing it anymore. Yeah, you'll be move on to something else. Right. This is and the we thing. Did. So I like Destiny a lot. And we have a couple of bros of ours who, uh, yeah. who, who are big Destiny fans. And we also made a, a Combro Nations clan, by the way. We called it That's Combro it. Nation, which if you guys want to join, I'll put a link in the description as well. Um, cool. I do want to do a stream recent uh, soon where we play all together and stuff. Do it. Good Let's fun, do it. Good fun. Um, but it is a full-time job. Like, most online games, like, you know, when it comes to, like, World of Warcraft and mm-hmm, whatnot, mm-hmm. they are full-time jobs. You, they, you need to have... That that game is your main game, and then you kind of dabble with other games on the side. That's all you really get. So you can never be, uh, let me say, Ghost of Tsushima fanatic because right. you're a Destiny fan. You yeah. could never be a Last of Us fanatic because you're a Destiny fan, <laughs> which is really... Especially when we're guys now, where we have jobs and stuff like that, we can't spend all of that time on one game because then we'll never play any other game. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I do feel you. Like, don't get me wrong. There are people, like you say, that play Destiny and World of Warcraft and all that stuff. And yeah, they play other games. But they play other... Like, often those guys tend to mainline it. Say, yeah, I've played it. And to get some of the story, missing yeah. the fact that the reason The Witcher is 40, 50 hours is because you want all those additional things. You don't want to do the 10-hour mainline, you know? Yeah. It's so, Gwent as well. When you get into Gwent, then it just it, right, you know, it, it just disappears. Mate, exactly. It, no, you joke, but there's a ton of story that comes in for, to the Gwent stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. There are right. idiots out there. These, um, there's, a, there's this one up, upside-down guy. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. I don't know who he is. But he, he doesn't like Gwent at all. And I'm like, mate, you don't even know the essence of Witcher. You're not even a true Witcher fan. You're just some fake fan on the side. Like, Shit. Like, okay, I get it. Like, maybe you're not into playing the side games and stuff. Fine. But, like, it, it unlocks so much more story like just even basic character interaction like let's say you go in and you you're at um, a tavern somewhere right and you can play Gwent with all these people and then you go away come back and they've been murdered well one told you about his kid and one told you you know like yeah and i made that up i don't think that actually happens in any of this but like these characters that look like just no-name npcs it turns out even the no-name npcs are still people in the game you know yeah yeah oh boy what a 
what what uh, st- what uh sorry rabbit hole we just went down there into turning into games turning into huge uh full-time jobs um so yeah destiny uh beyond light got announced they also announced like two years into the future as well there was like a yeah just double Plan check dlc the yeah let me just type that in for a second destiny to uh future destiny one sec i've deleted everything <laughs> Basically, they showed us that it was as they had said in Destiny 1, where they, they said, look, this we've got stuff coming for years to come, right? And in this, they were like, we've got stuff coming for years to come. Here it is, you know? Yeah, they actually showed it off, and this was this was something. So they gave expansions going into... Oh, God, that's fucking Wall Street Post. I can't read that. They gave um, updates, expansions going into the future, and one was called The Witch... Uh, the Sisters Witch. I can't find the goddamn page anymore. What's there were a few. The, the stuff was named because I think that witch is Crota's sister, didn't they say in the thing? So it's yeah, interesting. Yeah, it was something like that. Here so it's go. like okay, ties, into, it ties into old con. Go on, bro. Yeah, it's a Destiny. So in 2020, it's going to be Beyond Light. In 2021, it's going to be the Witch Queen. And then we saw a cutscene of Eris Morn um, bringing her, bringing her orb that she has, and then a symbol popped up on this on the wall over there. It's clearly a descendant of the Crota family or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and in 2022, Destiny 2 Lightfall. That's a working title at the moment. It might change, but it's got that pyramid ship that has come into come into yeah, yeah. the game that's going that's going on right now uh season of the arrivals has been has popped up right now something we didn't know until that stream and it looks cool for destiny players you know this looks this looks really interesting it does look good i mean I, i'm glad that destiny is finally becoming the game that it marketed itself as yeah you know um i love the i love the the thing that um what's the guy's name it's not the noseworthy guy it's the other guy sean Sean something shit I forgot Luke Smith don't remember anyway uh he he was on in that uh live stream and he was talking and he was saying we wanted to give you more game but we didn't want to go for like the next number like the number three which was very funny because in contrast to how it was back when they were owned by Activision and they came out with Destiny 2, they were like, we've got so much content in here, we've decided to put a number 2 on the box because right. it's worthy of that too. And then we got it and it was essentially an update for, for Destiny 1 and it was all like a marketing decision anyway. It was um, it was very funny to see that, but it's good that Destiny are now on track and doing something positive for their fans because I guess they're not owned by anyone now. They're like self-publishing. They get to yep. choose what they want. It's, it's really, really cool. It looks good. You know, it looks yeah. good for them. It looks like they, they know what they're, the point of everything they're doing is now, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I, ho- I hope it will be, I hope it will be good. Yeah. I just don't think I'm going to play it. Yeah. We'll see how it goes anyway. If it comes to like uh, September time and suddenly it's amazing. Although, as we said as well in that stream, September, kind of a bad month. Kind of a bad month right there. Not the place you want to be releasing this, to be honest. But I mean, they said something else. Like they said they're vaulting stuff now so they can bring back um, a lot of old content or or new content and, and keep things basically keep things fresh even though i know it's recycling old content but what was that what's that the cosmodrome re- yeah the, like bring back the cosmodrome that's awesome right you've no reason to go back and play it at all yeah. so it's functionally new content right especially if it's a limited event if it's like for the next week you know such and such is at this place you need to defeat these guys to, to do the thing for the event boom now you've got a reason to come back and play you got there's a you're busy you know yeah yeah so yeah I'm looking forward to what they got. It's a very bad time. Even I'm going to struggle as much of a fan as I am of Destiny. Even I'm going to struggle because I'll be deep, deep, deep into Cyberpunk and customizing my character. Five days behind Cyberpunk. Like, I'm sorry. I'm playing Cyberpunk two to three times before I'm considering myself done. Like, for with my first go. You know, like, because because yeah. it's not enough to just play through the story once, right? I need oh, to play no, through. No, I'm no, going to no. play male, female. I got to play different specs. I'm going to make you know 
like with Mass Effect, right? Renegade or Paragon, I'm going to make the evil decision, the bad decision. And what happens if I actually let this guy live? I've never done that before. You know, like all that stuff. I I got to do it. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know? Do you know what, though? I, I think I said this on the stream. I don't think they are worried too much about attracting a new audience. And the people that they are, that they're marketing to, in this at least, is their fans. Yeah. And like we said as well, people who like Destiny, people who play Destiny, they just play Destiny. Yeah, so the, the fact that Cyberpunk is coming out is inconsequential to those players right there. They just want to play more Destiny. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, yeah. So that's um that's all the news that came out right there. There's it's been a, a hefty one, especially with the with the fucking PlayStation Five. We waited way too long as PS4, sorry, P- uh, PlayStation fans, waiting in the darkness. Uh, so many months of drought. Yeah. But today, the day has finally come where we got the PlayStation console. We got to see it and see a bunch of great games that we'll be playing at launch. Yeah. Fucking great. Fucking. It great. looks awesome. Not even gonna yeah. lie, it looks sick. Oh, God, I love it. It's so beautiful, so beautiful. I really want to see all sides of it as well. I want to see the back. I want to see what that looks like, how the expansion's going to work, the uh, Dude, storage and all that. I think we're the only losers that care about this stuff because um, <laughs> one of the things I was saying to Rob the other day, I was saying the thing I hope actually just before the stream started, I was saying I hope we get to see the the top down like bird's eye look of a guy in a completely empty like universe and then it renders in as he turns around, renders yeah. the map that he's playing. To you and me, that would be awesome, super fascinating. We we desperately want to see that. I don't think anybody else would care. I think that section would bomb for most people, but you and me think that's shit's fa- fascinating, yeah, you know? That is fascinating to us. And I'm surprised more people don't see it as fascinating, but god damn it, it's <laughs> we are really in the minority. <laughs> right. God, yeah. what a perfect show this was. What a fucking perfect show. Right. They really yeah. hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I can't wait to see more from these guys, just like I can't wait to see more from our bros who have written in the Discord server with questions and uh, and thoughts on today's show. Uh, Best Discord there. server out there. Best Discord in the world, right there. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Um, if you want to pull it up as well, I'll, we'll read them in like, uh, we'll take turns and stuff like that. I've got uh, Diogo as the first guy right here. He wrote in and he says... I'll drop my question in for the True Gamer podcast as I'll be at work all day and I'll miss the recording. Just want to start off by saying thank you both for making one hell of a stream. You two were so pissed that I couldn't help but laugh along the whole time. Like Sheps read off the reactions his to his uh, Ashraf tweets four times in the span of one hour. <laughs> What? You tweeted Ashraf after they showed off the gameplay for no, whatever didn't. the first game was. You did. You tweeted him and people started giving you shit for it. And you were reading the replies. You probably read them four times, like back to back. And you didn't realize that you would keep, you kept reading them. No, I didn't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God damn it. Oh God, it's so funny. Oh, please, uh, uh, Ashton, if you're around, you have to clip some of that stuff for us, man. We put that on the Best Of Conversations channel. Um, Let's see. uh, And that doesn't mention... Oh, oh God, here we go. It's coming to me now. Doesn't mention how Eddie took off his shirt in voice chat. Did you? I think I I spilled alcohol on me. I think I spilled one of those shots on me when I was drinking it. So I I was like, all right, I'm going to take it off and I'm going to put on a hoodie. And I just did that there and then. I don't remember doing the voice chat I, I don't remember <laughs> i don't it's not there for me oh boy oh god that save file has been deleted it has been deleted error okay. um What's you guys are here? legends hold on hold on hold on diogo says ps pencil hold beard. on there's still there's still tons more there's still tons more to read hold on okay uh, he goes, uh, you guys are legends. So all I want to say uh, is I enjoyed seeing a lot of a lot of those games, just like what I did, just like I did at the Xbox event. Um, but the quality here was much better. Most shocking one of one for me was Sackboy, as I wasn't expecting anything from Little Big Planets uh, related, since that fr- franchise is basically dead. Um, hyped for that for the as years. well. Yeah, hyped for that as well as the big hitters of Spider Man and Horizon. What was it again? Forbidden, Forbidden Wilds. Forbidden West. Yeah. Forbidden West. That's it. Forbidden West. Cheers, lads, and hope you lads aren't too hungover after last night where we are. We and are. he says, 
and he says, oh, P.S. Pencil beard, but not really if your missus will be mad. Unless. <laughs> this this is something. I've, I've messaged Diogo, but he's probably at work right now. I'm begging you, Diogo. I can't. I can't take this beard off. I'm going to I'm going to give you your money back whatever you want. I can't get rid of this. A, my girlfriend said that she'll she'll dump me if I do. <laughs> but do you know how long it took me to grow this thing and I've become attached to it. I've bought like balms and oils for it. Also that pencil beard, man. Oh, see, if I was if I was my normal self, you know where I had like the stubble, I kept the stubble mm-hmm, going mm-hmm. and whatnot. That I wouldn't mind going to pencil bid for a little bit because it'll be yeah. like four days and it'll be back to normal again. I'll look like an idiot for a little bit. That's fine. But going from this, this full man beard, this into lion's pen- mane oh. down to down to the pedo tash. That's not that's not cool. That's not cool. Please don't make me do it. Yeah. Please. <laughs> I wait for your response. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's see. Jack says, "I don't think I don't think there's even a need for a question. To be honest, so much to talk about already. But I must say, Loki, bloody buzzing about the Stella to, la- to Last of Us, the Last <laughs> of Us two reviews, um, allowed the greatest sigh of relief in the world. I am hyped. Yes, Jack, Dude. I'm excited too, man." Jack's normally kind of on my side of things, you know, with the, um, it's going to be shitty, what do you call it, pessimistic a bit? Pessimistic, yes. So I'm glad he's hyped. I, boys, I want this game to be so good. I really want it to be amazing. I just don't trust, I just don't trust those journos, man. Let's see in it. I hope that we, I mean, if the game is good or not, it's not based on what they say. It's about what we say here, the true gamers, right? When we get the game in our hands and we're like, here you go, here you go, yeah. right here. Um, so Grey Jedi Snuggle. Uh, oh, before you read this, before you on. read this, right? My worry is because the boys on the Discord change their names so often that <laughs> they'll come back one day when they're bored and be like, "Oh, did they read my comment in this one? Can't remember." Hear a name, it will be them, and they will have no memory of it. Like I have no memory <laughs> of last night. They just won't know that it was them speaking. You know. They'll be like, damn, they didn't read out my comment once. And then they go back into the chat and they're like, look, it's right there. My right. name is clearly there. Right. Now, what happened? <laughs> um, Grey Jedi Snuggle says, uh, how do you even remember what happened? Basically, because I put this up, he was asking, do we even remember? It was tough. I'm not going to lie. And I did have to rewatch the stream. I did have to rewatch it. Let me read Nerox one because that was a, a joke one right there. Nirok says, thoughts on Deathloop. So he's put the link down mm-hmm. below, and I did watch this. Uh, this was also at the, um, I think it was at the Microsoft event last E3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was very, very cool. Oh, no, sorry. The, 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 I think it was the Bethesda one. It looks very good. The way they have to, like, one, they have to, like, try and kill each other in order to break the loop, right? That, that well, was so the. One wants to keep the loop going, and yes. the other wants to break out of the loop. And yes. I think you have to play as one or the other. You can't mix and match. So I guess it's kind of a game that you have to play minimum have to play twice. Yeah, yeah. It looks, it really looks very, very cool. Very it looks cool. very interesting. They also look like, for example, I'm looking at this thumbnail, right? Yeah. The chick's got a big sniper rifle. The dude's got a, like a, a deagle. Yeah. Presumably very different play styles as well. You know, yes, yeah. it looked interesting. In fact, we're seeing quite a few of these games coming out messing with time. You know, there yeah, was a, we are. 12 minutes. This, um, there was I that alien like the... looking one as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that called? The one where she May. had like one of her eyes was just black. If only I knew it was, it was a really cool space looking one. It looked, don't... it looked interesting. There were a lot of games there that I was like, oh, I'm not, didn't think I wanted a game like this, but it turns out that I do. Like the, yeah. the one with the chick with those little black things. And I don't know, it kind of had a Zelda vibe going. She, she did like a magic arrow off her bow as well. It looks sick. Yeah. Um, whatever that is, I'm, I'm keen for. Um, he see. also says uh, one of the one of the games announced at the PS5 event made by Arcane Studios. That's the game he's talking about. And also uh, the guys behind Dishonored. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. That's, that's good stuff. Good stuff right there. Yeah. Oh, you answered uh, because you're rewatching. <laughs> yeah, okay, I answered the uh, Jedi Grey Snuggles one <laughs> back in the. Yeah. Go uh, on, we read a Super Bleach one. Super Bleach. Thoughts on what the Spider Man Miles Morales game will be like? Will it be DLC or a new game like Lost Legacy? 
also, do you think the PS5 exclusive or cross-gen? I think it's going to be a new game because they didn't mention DLC at all when they revealed the game, and a lot of people were expecting it to be a new game. What do you think? I think it's been we, confirmed we, it's DLC, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been yeah. confirmed. At the time, we didn't know, and it's only this morning. I did send out a tweet to Insomniac yeah. Games, proper professional. I was like, I've got two questions, blah, blah, blah. And it's you been confirmed. Care to comment on the record for... <laughs> Exactly, yes, please. Um, and they, they said there is going to be DLC. It's going to be part of a significant, they said there were those words, substantial, sorry, substantial expansion to the full g- original game. Now, whether or not it means that we have to buy the original game with all these upgrades and expansions, I don't know. Whether it, they could sell yeah. it separately, I'm not sure. I mean, are we we'll talking blood see. and wine? Significant... Th- you know? I think I think it will be quite big because it is yeah. bringing a massive character like this and then just doing two missions is pretty shitty. I agree. Um, but what I'm thinking is, are they going to sell it standalone? Is it going to be like a standalone expansion? Because if you have to buy it with the game again for PS5 because they've done so many substantial updates and whatnot, then what do I do with my PS4 version? Do I just throw it in the bin? Is, right. You know? Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Um, um, I hope it's I hope it's cool though. That's the main thing. As long <laughs> as it's a very cool one. All right, let me read uh, the next one. This one is from hashtag Your Name for Anime Club. That's our boys are here. I need to watch it first to let, to know if we should be including it. Anyway. Apparently, I, I've heard people say that Your Name is like the best ever, like better than anything. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what to compare the, that to. So the only it. thing is that I really want us to be on Samurai Champloo while Ghost of Tsushima's out. So okay. Okay. Anyway. Um, is it bad to say I expected more? Yes, it is bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> as you know, I'm not a fan of Horizon, so I don't care about the sequel. Majority of the exclusives don't really pique my interest, even uh, sorry enough to convince me to buy a PS5. That's because you're a filthy PC user. That's why. <laughs> um, aside from Demon Souls, Demon Souls look really fucking good, and I might just bite the bullet on that one. Other exclusives are timed, so I'll pick a so I'll pick that up. Oh, uh, pick that up on PC. Yeah, the PC peasant, whatever. Oh, I see he already knows he's. <laughs> I love how he like knew you were gonna do it. <laughs> the thing is, is that you're saying timed exclusive, but it's Horizon. Horizon One has come to PC. Death Stranding, which isn't a, a PlayStation owned IP, is coming to PC. What are the evidence you claiming that you're going to be able to play all of these PlayStation exclusives that are that are timed exclusives on your PC? Yes, yeah, I heard. Did you enjoy Red Dead after? Two yeah, did years? you? Did you? Yeah, did you do that? And so you enjoyed Spider Man. Did you enjoy Spider Man? Did you enjoy The Last of Us? Did you enjoy that too? Right. Did you enjoy God of War? Is that, is that, is that <laughs> no? Okay, okay, no problem. All right, yeah. You see, see how that goes. And Bloodborne, Bloodborne. Okay, that might be actually coming though. There is a rumor of that. I think Red <laughs> so, Dead also went out, didn't it, to PC? Yeah, eventually. It was fucking yeah. years so later. Like a year and a half or something. Mate, we all enjoyed the game. We made our memes of it, and everything was like, "Oh, that's a great memory." Celebrated its uh, its game of the uh, game year awards, uh, yeah. game of the year awards from various outlets. We put that to bed, moved on to the next games, Ethan and then PC gamers a, are like, "Ethan made a two hundred thousand sub channel out of that one game. He hasn't done anything <laughs> else. You know, it's, it's just that." Exactly, exactly. And then PC gamers got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. His question continues, it goes, the majority of games that they showed were awesome, but I don't think anything has really showcased the true potential of PS5. I think Ratchet and Clank did that very, was, very well. I was about to say, I'm glad you said the same thing. Yeah, very far off the mark here, as, as it here. very far for once. Um, usually you're a, you're a, I, sometimes he does it on purpose, sometimes he does yeah. it to be a troll, but I feel like this time he may have missed it on this one, but we love you still, we love you still the same. Um, did it, where was I? I'll give you Horizon 2, despite personally not believing the claim that it's in-engine footage. Okay. That's interesting. You don't okay. believe that is all right. Ratchet and Clank looks great, but does but doesn't look demanding enough to show off how powerful the PS5 will be. Again, I think it was, but okay. I Spider-Man, mean, not like it, it wasn't a tech demo. They weren't like you know ringing every last bit out. But the fact that that was just that what we saw was just the regular part of the normal gameplay of the game. I think yeah. that goes to show just at least how much of a leap forward it is compared to the PS4. You know, I yeah. Think. 
I think as well it's going to be one of those situations where like when it comes to the next console like it does for everything in the beginning the games will be a great a visual upgrade you'll see things yeah. but then towards the end of it towards the back end you'll start to see photo realistic like Avengers end game level of graphics and stuff mm-hmm. like that you're like whoa this is amazing <laughs> um he continues to say uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales seems to be a standalone expansion, which is cool, but I have a feeling it will be very short. There's a possibility to that, but there's also a possibility it will be big. You never know. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we said, I think it'll be shit if they make it short. Agreed. Um, which doesn't uh, really warrant a purchase of a console personally, he says. Worlds are here. It sucks that you're wrong. As long as you're okay with being wrong, that's that's totally fine. That's totally fine. Yeah, we still I mean, accept you. You want to be part of the PC peasant race, you know? Fine, we'll support yeah. you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We, uh, we we won't we won't ever purchase a PC ourselves, except we're actually going to do that. But so, we are. Yeah. Yeah, for it's only for streaming. But, yeah, exactly. For what it's intended for: Excel spreadsheets and streaming. Exactly. Maybe exactly. some Minesweeper. We'll do a Minesweeper sweet, uh, stream, you know? <laughs> do you know what? We have to do that. The first game we got was like, guys, we got this PC. We decided we're going to put it through its paces and play a PC game. Pull out Minesweeper. Here we right, go, boys. Really <laughs> uh, let's see. Dylan says... Bear with me. What am I doing here? Um, full thoughts on the new Spider-Man game. To me, it caught me so off guard that it's coming this year. Is it coming this year? Yeah, holiday 2020. It's going to be a launch title. What? I, for some reason, I thought it was 2021. Uh, it looks like it's going to be like Arkham. It's going to be like an Arkham Origins type of situation, which I'm not mad about. I wonder how much stuff... Go on, bro. No, no. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. Um, I no. wonder how much new stuff they'll show off in this game and how much they'll save for the actual release of Spider-Man 2. Maybe we get Miles. May I like you said as well? If they're doing this to test the waters and whatnot, that would be very cool. I mean, what was the <clears throat> who was the character in the ending of? It, there was a boy. Was it Miles in in the end of Spider Man PS4? I don't remember. There was a boy. He was, and he had powers as well. It. God. I'm just saying, like Miles isn't a bad shout. You know? Mate, I would definitely buy a, a Miles game. I would. God, yeah. do it. Do it. Just, like I say, just write him like the movie. Mm-hmm. And you've got gold. You know, it's a money printing machine. Yeah. Um, uh, there was a bit of the trailer where I thought it was Miles actually walking on the streets of New York, which um, would be such a cool new feature. I want to be able to walk into an alley, change into my suit and swing away to do bits mate yeah that, that, that would be a cool feature i'm not even gonna lie um as for the story i wonder how they'll make it so peter isn't in the game because this is miles's game and i seriously doubt they'll kill peter off this early maybe he'll go on a trip with mj or 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 something and miles doesn't want to ruin his trip so he'll take this opportunity to prove himself by taking down the antagonist all by himself which brings me to my next question who do you lads think the antagonist for this game will be? Kingpin, oh. Prowler, what are your thoughts? Um, the game looks gorgeous, and you guys will be damn sure I'll be spamming show and tell with some screenshots. Boys, seriously, if anyone's made it this far and they're not on the Discord, one of my favorite rooms on, on it is the show and tell room. Yeah, And boy. Dylan and a few of the other guys are really big into the photo mode stuff. And some of these shots look great. I'm, they're gorgeous. They look like they're supposed to be promotional material and whatnot for the game. Do, don't they? They look better so than good. half the stuff that people actually put out. So, <laughs> who do you think will be the the villain? It's hard, man. I I would say Kingpin because he he got arrested in the Spider Man PS4 game, so I could see him like escaping and then causing havoc and whatnot. And Miles believing, like he, like uh, Dylan just said, believing he can take him down by himself and not having to worry, uh, Pete. I think that's probably the play. Mm-hmm. Although we did see some some very weird villains in the in the trailer. And also, can we talk for a minute about Miles's powers? He had like electricity coming from his hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has like he's almost like an electric eel. Yeah, it's a cool little power, man. And yeah, it's very cool. Miles can do some good stuff. So that was so cool. Um. I it did really come out of left field. I was not expecting that. It was Me neither. complete surprise. 
And man, what a great one it was. What a great one it was. I can't wait to play yeah. it on the, on the new PS4. Can't wait for it. All right. Thanks for writing in there, Dylan. Let me uh, read on the next question here. The next one is from the great gamer hashtag fuck 2020. I agree with that big time. Um, thoughts on GTA 5 being on the PS5? It's hilarious that they ported a game that's almost two generations old onto next gen. I mean, that's a PS3 game for fuck's sake. I don't mm-hmm. think it will be massively different looking though. Probably the same uh, GTA 5 PC or PS4 version. Why didn't they pour? or make a next-gen version of Red Dead Redemption 2? These are the big questions that we yeah. want to ask. I bet you the upgrade isn't even going to be that good. It's going to be barely anything, I but people are just going to buy it because it's GTA. I think the biggest difference is going to be the load times, and you will not be able to tell if they run it side by side. It, you won't be able to tell. Nine times That's out of ten, you, you wouldn't be able to tell. It would just be the load times, which will they be said- a huge improvement. <laughs> I mean, anything is an improvement over those fucking like fourteen minute load times and whatnot. Right. You sort of the the ritual is when you're starting GTA Five. It's like, all right, get in, go immediately to online. Otherwise, you're not gonna get in that night. And then go off, make yourself a cup of tea, make yourself some dinner, come back, and you're still doing that hovering above the 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 city like uh, camera movement that does in the loading screen and then maybe possibly 45 minutes later you get in and then you get shot and you end the mission and then you have to do that loading screen all over again that's 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 the whole ritual right there yeah uh it is a bit stupid as well that they went for a game that's nearly two generations old now like you said it's i I don't i i really feel bad for the fans of red dead that they, they didn't get anything like even just basically just just update it, you know, like just remaster it. Not even, not even a remaster. Just port it, man. That's what they should have said. They should have. I think they could. I think actually they couldn't do this because then they won't be able to sell the PS5 version when they when they come up with GTA 5. But they should have said something like Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to get a next gen update mm-hmm. and it's basically going to be the PC port. That's basically what it's going to be. Yeah. I'd be like, cool, no problem, that's fine. But the way they didn't even acknowledge their current game. It's, it's their really current bad. flagship. I mean, it? It, I I understand GTA Five is still, is outperforming it, right? I get that, but it doesn't mean it's not their current flagship. It's mad, you absolutely know? mad. Absolutely. Anyway, oh, go see. on. You read the next one. Uh, Sean says, "Do you think we'd be able to take off the PS Five stand and be able to lay it flat?" Also, you guys aren't true gamers because you have girlfriends. It's true. We're not true gamers. We've been lying to you. We've been Um, lying this whole time. We're frauds. (laughs) Honestly, I will be surprised if we can't. We've been able to do that with every console. What? The pictures, the promotional pictures actually have it in a uh, laid down format. Oh, great. But it is strange. It's like, so we've we've only seen a couple of sides of the console. We've seen it head on. We've seen the left hand side of it that has the PlayStation logo. Yeah. And we've seen the top. We haven't seen the back and we haven't seen the right hand side. The right hand side in these promotional pictures has a, you know, the stand that you put on the on the bottom of it when you're standing it upright. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like you can use that stand to plug into i don't know a hole on the side of the console to lay it flat so because obviously it's a very weird shape and if you don't have a stand then it would just rock away from you or something like that so it's the stand it looks like can be used in both configurations that's what the promotional material shows anyway yeah i mean we've never had a playstation other than the ps1 that couldn't be played in multiple positions so yeah yeah it it would be very shocking to me also because they understand it don't forget right um Sony is very, it's a Japanese company and they're very proud to be Japanese. And Japan, especially in Tokyo, has this stuff that people live in very small spaces, you know? Yeah, um, very small. It's weird. Right. So they want to be able to, if people are going to buy their console, make it at least as convenient as possible for it. You know, if someone doesn't have the vertical space wherever they're going to keep it, but they do have the horizontal space or vice versa, they want to make sure that, that, that it can fit somewhere, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to mention because Rohit's question down below, Kenna Bridge of Spirits. That is the thing I was talking about with the little black yes. things and the, where she has the blue arrow and stuff. Mm. Did not know I was in need of this game, but I'm right? actually genuinely down. I'm really interested. 
it was gorgeous and as well the um the animations and the level of quality of the the character models and the textures and stuff like that it looked like a pixar movie yeah i was like did. whoa this is great and i mean if it's wholesome if it's if it's enjoyable if it's got good mechanics in it fuck it i'll play it, I'll play yeah. it. Why, oh, why not let me read Rohit's one. Uh, Rohit, uh, in brackets, he's got DC Month, which is Superman Day, by the way, today, the day of recording this uh, this uh, podcast. So happy Superman Day to everyone out there. Um, he says, what do you think of the two versions of the PS5 at launch? Do you think the physical games will disappear in the in future gens? And what do you think of Kenna Bridge of Spirits? What about that first one for you, bro? What do you think about the two versions? I think the two versions is is great. Personally, I'm getting the disc. I think I don't know if we're ready for digital only. How many do we have numbers on digital only Xboxes? The sounds. Uh, then we don't have numbers for Xboxes, let alone digital only Xboxes. Yeah. They're not going to give us those those numbers, mate. You're dreaming. Because yeah. I just I don't get me wrong. I do think in the future, yeah, it probably will be the case that stuff's digital only. But dude, people's internet just can't hack it. Yeah, you know, and and the storage space is so low. Like the storage space is still probably going to be an issue for for the PS Five. Mm-hmm. I I'm used to it. I think I as long as I can get five high quality games on it, I think I'm probably okay. You know, mm. um. So yeah, I, I, think, I think it's cool. I think they they did good with this one as long as the price reflects it accurately. Like it's fifty pounds cheaper because you don't have a four K Blu Ray player in it. As yeah. long as the price reflects it accurately, this is good. I don't like the whole uh, PlayStation, so the uh, Xbox Series X and then the Xbox Series S or Lockhart, whatever it's going to be, because then you're confusing your customers with different powers and you're you're telling people that yeah. it's okay to go for this less powerful one when really you want everyone to buy the more expensive one because you yeah. want the best game out there. It's confusing for your customer, whereas this one, you're literally getting the same console. The only difference is if you want to use discs, you don't. You don't buy the one with uh, with the right. with the no disc drive. Absolutely. By the way, I just noticed in this in the sidebar just there, uh, Adam Sunling, his uh, his profile picture is me wearing the Batman mask in yeah. yesterday's voice chat. Yeah. <laughs> you son of a gun! <laughs> oh god, Adam, These you boys, fucking I slay swear. me! Such trolls. Oh um, boy. And do you think future games will disappear? Uh, physical games will disappear. I think eventually they will. Maybe, but I, I don't ever see us. For example, collector's editions, right? There's a reason people buy them, and I don't think yeah. it's for. We're still going to get something, right? So, the entire the idea that there will be nothing physical to do with your game, ridiculous. Maybe there will no longer be disc drives and stuff. Fine, okay, whatever. But not for like. 10 years probably seriously i just don't see it happening there's also the business side of it as well like those collector's editions and those models and figurines and stuff that they make that's a big part of their income Mm -hmm. you think they're just gonna turn away they're just gonna say no we're not gonna make those anymore that right yeah they they count on that income right there and it sounds it sounds silly but having the disc in it is a major factor of people buying it because no one if you can download the game and then you have to wait a day or two because something got de- delayed, it it's gonna frick with stuff, right? But I just thought of a an, an, an analogy, something that makes you well, might make you think. It made me think anyway. When you go to the shop and you buy something, you give them the money and then you take your item. If it's something, say, kind of expensive, let's say it's a say you're buying your PS5 and they don't give you a receipt, you're like. But yeah. I need I need my receipt. Yeah, and it's like oh, it's okay. We're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna email it to you, and it's like okay, you're gonna email it to me. That's fine. I've I've had email receipts as well. But I'm wh- what if I don't get the email? Like what? Well, there's a moment. There's just a moment where you think uh, I give me the physical one as well, and I'll also get the email one as well. Mm-hmm. And then once I get the email, I could throw this one away. That's no problem. Yeah, that's the that just that little thought right there, that bump in your head where you're like. Hold on a second. Think of that in regards to f- phys- uh, physical games. That's the way that I feel anyway. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. All right. Um, that was our last question right there. Thank you, everybody, for writing into the True Gamer podcast. You guys are all true gamers because you did so. Uh, and uh, I've now knighted you all true gamers. Uh, from henceforth, you shall be known as a true gamer. Yeah. There you go right there. Um, 
this was a, a good episode. We've got great things coming our way. Hopefully by next episode we'll have the price to talk about like I predicted. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Fingers It'll be interesting, crossed. That would be cool if we do. Yeah. Do you have any last minute thoughts you want to put out there, Brozif? No, I think I think we just got a really amazing uh, reveal of a lot of stuff and some games that no one was expecting. Yeah, God, and that Spider-Man one was I'm happening. really hyped. Oh, did we mention that Kenner's Bridge of Spirits? Um, I, th- I think it looks great. I think it looks yeah. really good. Isn't that the one where we were saying the team was super small? It was like seven people or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was So two dudes showed up on screen and they were like, hey, we've been making this game, a little indie studio. And I was like, is this two guys? And I think you said it was five guys in total. It was, was, it like, was very small. Yeah, That's so cool. Five dudes great. just made essentially a Pixar game. I was like, yeah. whoa. Really, really cool stuff. Massive props to them. Massive props to all of those developers that were there, all the people that made those games. They, they all look fantastic. And I can't wait to see when this console launches, when the price comes out, and what else we'll be getting in the future. We just need the price. I need to know. You know? I just God need damn to it, know. Sony. Give it to us. Give it to us. <laughs> All right, guys, um, that's the end of the True Gamer Podcast. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. If you haven't already, don't forget to like the, the video. Don't forget to share it with your friends as well. It helps us out. If you listen to us on like podcast services, uh, feel free to rate us five stars and above. For some reason, uh, the five stars is the only ones that count. They, don't, they really don't like anything below that. So, yeah, do that for us if you can. And, um, yeah. yeah, we'll catch you guys. We'll catch you guys next time. Yeah, I'll catch you yeah, next we time as well, We appreciate you, boys. Yeah, yeah, but no more, none of this drinking stuff. Frick you, no. Oh, we're not, we're oh. not doing that anymore. Oh dear God, oh. it was <laughs> tough. It was really tough. All right, bro. We'll catch you all in the next one. I'll catch you later, bro. Catch you later. <laughs>